Hi everyone. I'm so happy to see all of you. I welcome you to this course in Marketing Management 1. This is part of the compulsory uh, course that you have to uh, go through in Term 1. Now all of us understand what marketing is because as consumers, we all use products, we all are influenced by some advertisement or probably some suggestion by some, some people that we know and then we end up buying products. Right? So, so uh, since we understand uh, marketing intuitively as consumers, now this is a course many of you would probably uh, be able to relate to and this is an important component of uh, your entire curriculum because this would help you understand what are the nuances of marketing as a, as a mar marketer, what a marketer should really do in order to market its product, in order to develop certain products for certain segments of consumers so that they're able to effectively sell. So in the end, uh, 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 organization exists because it offers something. It offers a product or a service or an idea uh, or whatever it is, and it, it need not necessarily be a commercial organization. Sometimes even governments, for example, may exist. They may run certain businesses. For example, Indian Railways, right? The government, uh, you know, facilitates your movement by offering services like Indian Railways. There could be many other things. There could be commercial organizations like banks. There could also be institutions like this one, which offer services, right? So there could be non-governmental organizations. So all these organizations need to market themselves and that's where uh, why it's important uh, that you need to know about uh, uh, the subject called marketing now in this particular session i'm going to give you an overview of module one so this course has about eight modules so i'll take you i'll briefly tell you uh, or, or rather i'll list those eight modules and then i'll focus on module number one in this particular session what are we going to cover in module number one now, if you uh, see here, there are eight modules uh, which uh, we have divided the entire course into uh, these eight modules over the 30 sessions, the 30 hours that we have with you in this course. So the first module which I'm going to discuss today with you, I'm going to talk about the uh, introduction to marketing and what all we're going to cover under this module. There are multiple sessions uh, we have um, allocated to cover this module. So each module would have a certain number of sessions. It could be two sessions, three sessions, or four or five sessions, or uh, whatever it is. So that's how we have divided the entire session into several modules. The first module that we're going to talk about is introduction to marketing. Now, since this is the first module, uh, I'll uh, we'll try and give you uh, what is the uh, what are the key things in marketing. So it's kind of a a uh, uh, preliminary understanding of, of what all is involved in marketing uh, and then as we go along we'll choose one specific aspect of marketing and delve deeper into it and that's what the other modules will come into the picture uh, in the second module we'll talk about the marketing environment you know in terms of um, you know the existence of a business a business exists uh, in an environment so as a marketer i need to understand uh, the environment in, uh, environment could be political environment or the economic environment or the legal environment so there are several aspects of the environment that i should be aware of for example if i am manufacturing uh, a, a company is manufacturing uh, the uh, say passenger cars and then the government says that you have to move from uh, you know bharat stage three to directly maybe stage five then uh, so when i'm entering into this uh, market I need to ensure that I develop products which conforms to those rules and regulations of the government. So an understanding of the environment would be very, very important uh, aspect of my uh, marketing. So in the second um, module, we'll discuss in detail what, when you talk about environment, what are the different kinds of environments? It could be external environment. It can also look at my internal environment in terms of how am I capable of, uh, you know, matching my uh, efforts and resources uh, with the external environment so that I can effectively meet the needs of my customers and uh, and offer uh, better customer experiences. So uh, second module will talk about environment. The third module will explore something called value. Now value is a concept which we have different understanding. Uh, people have different understanding of the concept of values. For some of us, value is only about price, but that's that's not necessarily so. That means if, if price was the only way of evaluating value, then we would uh, only buy products which are uh, you know cheap or in the sense that which are low price and then 
we would find it very difficult really to justify the existence of a company like Apple. Now, most of the products of Apple are premium price, you know, they are expensive, but then people, a lot of people buy these products because they see value. So value need not necessarily be only in terms of price. So what are the elements of value? Now, another important thing about value is perceived value. You know, consumers perceive value in a particular way. So for example, if I look at a product, my perception, the value that I would um, derive from buying that product would be very different from somebody else with some different kinds of demographics. And that's exactly uh, what we are going to look at in module uh, uh, four and five. We'll look at consumer behavior. How do they re really behave in terms of, uh, you know, their buying process? Uh, how do they uh, arrive at you know, their decision uh, in buying? What are the uh, stages involved? And then uh, what are the things that really influence? For example, uh, a particular person may uh, have you know, certain characteristics. It could be a, a psychological character, psychographics, that's what we call it, or certain characteristics, which is more demographic characteristics. That may influence that person's decision to buy a particular product or, or a service. So you need to understand uh, that in the uh, the next module, which is consumer behavior in the fourth module. Now, as a marketer, I need to understand how consumers behave. And that's how I will be able to design all my marketing efforts to influence the consumer's behavior. That's exactly what happens. And I'm sure many of you uh, would probably have, uh, you know, as consumers, some of you would have benefited definitely from the marketing efforts of others, and some of you actually uh, have, you know, ended up with a bad experience of buying a product, which after buying you realize probably you either did not need it or, uh, you know, the experience of the product has been very, very bad. Now, uh, I need to understand consumer behavior to be able to make sure that when I'm talking about delivering value, if I understand your behavior in terms of how do you buy and how do you evaluate product, I, it will be easier for me to really reach out. Now, in order to reach out to consumers, do I really need to reach out to each and every consumer, um, you know, for my product? Not necessarily, right? I all my all the products may not necessarily be meant for all the customers. So what can, what companies do? They try to segment the market, and that's what we're going to do. Look in the next module, we're going to look at segmentation, targeting and position. So what I try to do is they divide the entire market into uh, homogeneous groups. So I, I, I kind of make a segment uh, out of them. And then I decide based on the resources that I have, what kind of, you know, how, how can I, uh, which of these um, segments we, I can post profitably, uh, you know, serve. So, so based on my resource, understanding or my resources and requirement of the segment, I only choose few segments because if I choose all the segments, I may be constrained by my resources. So I may not really be able to uh, uh, you know, effectively meet the requirements of all these segments. So what I do, I look at a target segment. So uh, you know, I may choose one particular uh, segment or a few segments out of many where I uh, try to offer my product and influence the consumers. And then uh, another concept which is very important in the context of segmentation and um, um, uh, you know, targeting is positioning. So, for example, the segments that I'm catering to, there are other uh, companies who are also catering to that segment. So I need to ensure that consumers perceive my product, um, you know, differently from the others. Other otherwise, what may happen is that consumers do not see any difference between my product and a consumer's product uh, on, on a competitor's product. Uh, what may happen is they may you know, buy, end up buying the competitor's product rather than my uh, my product. So I, if I can uh, develop a distinct imagery for my product, there are chances that can, I can attract consumers to my product and, you know, uh, make them avoid buying competitor's product. So positioning is very, very important and positioning is typically related to consumer's mind. Uh, in our minds, we try to place each of the product at um, you know, along certain dimensions, and then I need to figure out uh, where a gap really exists, and I try to position my product uh, in that particular, uh, you know, uh, perceptual map. We will come back and, um, you know, deal with these in greater details when we talk about that particular module. And then uh, after that, in module six, we'll talk about this marketing mix, the four P's. I'll touch upon what are the four P's today. So there's the four P's of marketing. Uh, the the whole concept of marketing, the four P's came in, in the 1960s, where 
you know, it was felt that if I get these four P's correct, I should be able to, um, you know, get consumers, influence consumers to buy my product. So that's why it's talking about marketing mix. Um, you know, so if I get these mixes, these four P's, uh, if I get them correct, it becomes much more easier. So we look at uh, what are these uh, <coughs> elements of marketing mix. Uh, and then in module seven, we'll talk about product and brand management, right? We need to manage brands. The moment we are talking about cars, we are not really talking about cars per se. We are talking about maybe a MG Hector as a brand, you know, or maybe a Toyota uh, Camry as a as a brand. So you know, one could be the corporate brand of the Toyota itself, and could also be a a, a particular product brand. So I can, I'm looking at so when can, can people uh, really evaluate a brand becomes very very important. And so McDonald's, for example, so brand stands for something else. The moment uh, the uh, you uh, come across the term McDonald's, there's certain imagery which comes to your mind. So a brand really stands for certain things in terms of maybe the uh, ambience of uh, the store and the professional uh, way in which you are served or maybe the pricing of the products and so on, the variety of the products that you have. So when you talk about brand, all these things come to your mind. So as, as a marketer, I need to create a brand. The so more stronger the brand, more stronger can I build relationship with customers and in the long term that's going to be more beneficial uh, to me as a company and the last one we're going to talk about a marketing plan once I've uh, you know as part of my entire marketing strategy once I have all these uh, four P's how do I develop a specific marketing plan to uh, you know <coughs> you know meet the requirements of the market and so on so this uh, in a nutshell is what we're going to do in all the in these 30 sessions that we have with you now uh, all these things we're going to cover as part of this course but right now I'm going to focus only on module one which is the first one introduction to marketing so what are we going to cover here so what we are going to cover here is we're going to look at what defining what is marketing right you know is it about communication some of you may feel that okay uh, marketing is about advertising uh, that, that's only one part of it. Marketing is not really uh, that, you know. Then we also come across this term called selling. So is selling different from marketing? Or is there something else? We need to understand what marketing is. We'd also try and understand marketing from a process perspective. So when you're talking about marketing as a process, if you really understand the process, you'll be able to uh, be a better marketer or you may be able to develop a better marketing plan to meet the requirements of your uh, target segment. So we'll also look at the importance of marketing. As I said earlier, marketing is something which is very important to get consumers to buy your product. And in, uh, and in that sense, uh, this is a department which has a very strong influence on getting revenues for the company. And based on the revenues, everything else, else follows. The company really exists because its ultimate objective is to make profit. If it's a profit-making organization, of course, even for a non-profit-making organization or non-profit organizations, it's important to uh, make money for its own survival. I mean, even if it is uh, not really, uh, you know, intending to make profit, it should have earned enough to be able to pay salaries to its people, to be able to uh, meet its expenses. So that, so from that perspective, marketing is important. For example, there are a lot of NGOs, and and they approach you for contributing now. Um, and most of these NGOs are uh, dependent on contribution of people. So uh, once the, uh, they approach you, so how do you decide which NGO to really support? So marketing would play a very, very important role. For example, I'm very passionate about uh, ch ch you know, girl child's education. So if there's an NGO which specifically uh, approaches you and they are working in that sphere, there is a likelihood that you may possibly contribute uh, to that NGO and so on. So that's an example of a non-profit organization. So we'll take a look at uh, the uh, the other things that we're going to take a look at is what are the uh, scope and functions of marketing, then marketing and its relation with other business function. We'll try and touch upon it. How is marketing related to or how do they interact with other departments within the organization? It's very important. Uh, we'll look at marketing orientation. We'll um, uh, um, see how marketing has really evolved over a period of time. Uh, we'll also develop a basic understanding of the four P's, which is which we talked about in marketing mix. Uh, is what I'll just introduce the four P's, and then we'll also look at tasks of marketing management. 
So in this initial few sessions on, on the module one, you will get a basic understanding of what marketing really is. So it's just kind of an overview that you'd get. And as we go along, we'll uh, get into deeper, uh, get deeper into the other aspects of marketing and more, uh, you know, uh, in details, we'll look at the other aspects of marketing, right? So now uh, this is just a definition which is given here. And um, just for your basic understanding, one of the definitions, there could be many uh, um, uh, definitions here. So marketing is a process. So this is a process definition of marketing uh, by which companies engage customers, build strong customer relationship, create customer value in order to capture value. Uh, from customers in return. So what you're trying to do is you are trying to communicate with customer, build relationships, and then you offer value, and then you also get something in return from the customer. That's what marketing is all about. And then, as we said, we will explore uh, marketing as a process. So this is what we're going to look at. So we're going to look at uh, understanding the marketplace and customer needs and wants. So some of the terms We'll, I'll try and define, uh, you know, I'll touch upon now, which we'll uh, try and define in greater details later, right? So some of the terms are very important. Needs, what are needs, what are wants, what is demand, and all these things are very, very important uh, for us to understand um, as far as marketers are concerned. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to understand the marketplace, customer needs, and that's where all marketing starts from, understanding of customer needs, right? And if I understand the needs well, I'd be able to, uh, market well. For example, all of you are uh, aware of a company called Uber, right? Or, uh, <clears throat> you know, Ola, see all these uh, ride sharing, uh, you know, companies. Now, how did they come into being? They realized that there's a customer's need. Uh, you know, cust some customers do not want to invest in a car. Now, invest having a car is, of course, one thing is that it gives you flexibility. But at the same time, what happens is, you know, one is your money gets stuck, you need to maintain it, you need to put efforts to drive and so on. So there's a segment of customer who doesn't want to invest in a car or drive their own car. So if a, uh, if a company can offer uh, maybe uh, an option where com uh, the uh, consumers can call a car whenever he wants it and can ride from one place to another, so there's a need which is there. So that's how these companies come and meet those needs. So understanding needs are very, very important as far as marketing is concerned. So the first thing that we're going to do, then we're looking at, then we'll look at designing a customer value driven marketing strategy. So uh, you know, what value are you looking at? For example, if you uh, look at Uber, uh, of course the value is in terms of I don't have to drive. I don't have to uh, really look at a parking space and so on. Those one of the values, but then, I would also compare with the price. If the price is very, very high, if the per kilometer charges are very, very high, there would be a point beyond which I would prefer to drive my own car than actually looking at an Uber. So I need to find out, as Uber, I need to find out what is uh, 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 the value, customer value uh, that they're looking at. So I need to look at a customer value driven strategy, the second part. And then I can look at constructing uh, uh, marketing, integrated marketing program that delivers superior value and then engage with customer, build profitable relationship. This is the stages that, and then finally, I capture value from customer. Capture value from customers is typically, uh, I get money out of what I really have to offer. So that's what we uh, are going to look at. And then uh, under the scope of marketing, we'll try and look at what, what is being marketed. You know? we are, most of us are familiar with uh, goods and services being marketed. But if you look at this list, there are many other things. Not only are the goods and services, we also market events, right? You know, IFA awards or other marketing events, right? We are also marketing experiences. For example, travel and tourism, what are they trying to market? They're marketing either a place or their um, marketing experience. Bungee jumping, for example, and it's so popular in some, some parts of the world. So what are you doing? You're just trying to market experiences. Uh, it could be person, for example, in election, the leaders, what, what, are, what are the uh, political parties trying to do? They're trying to market this person. So all these uh, scenarios, marketing would be uh, important. So we need to understand what is being marketed. So depending on what is being marketed, many other things will follow. So if I'm going to market a person, the strategies that I would adopt would be very different from when I'm looking at marketing a service or a place and so on. And who markets? Not necessarily commercial organizations, as I said. It could be non-commercial organizations, the government, and um, you know many other kinds of organizations would market 
And what are the different kinds of markets? It need not necessarily be only consumer market. There's a huge uh, market which is for uh, industrial products. Even governments, for example, if I'm uh, many of the companies which sell infrastructure, for them, the consumers is the government, right? So I can also have resource market and I can also have manufacturer market and so on. Uh, then we'll also look at difference between marketplaces, which is physical uh, markets versus market spaces, which is more virtual markets. And today there are a uh, lot of, um, you know, um, talk about market spaces because many of these uh, deals are done in the market spaces, right? And then we'll move on to some of these uh, major core marketing concepts, needs, wants, wants and desires. Needs are uh, more basic. For example, we are all familiar with the three needs that we have. Uh, food, clothing, and shelter. Apart from these three, we may also uh, have need for entertainment or education. Uh, some of these needs. Now, now need, these needs needs to be satisfied with something, right? The food for. So when I'm hungry, I need to satisfy my hunger. Uh, I have several choices. You know, you either eat at home uh, with your roti, chapati, uh, or you may go out to a restaurant, or you go out to a fast food restaurant. So there are different choices, or maybe you want some. Uh, chips or biscuits or whatever. So there are different options. So what happens is when my need is directed to a specific uh, thing which can meet my need, we call it a want. And then when the want is backed up by uh, my ability to purchase, it becomes demand. So we need to understand, uh, you know, in a country of 1.3 billion needs, everybody would have a need, right? But then uh, is there a demand? That's what we have to find out. Do these people, all the people, in this country have the uh, ability to pay to buy a particular product is what is important for us to understand. So we'll trick, try and take a deeper look. We will also uh, look at target market positioning and segmentation. I talked about segmentation positioning earlier and target markets, how do I uh, really do that? Uh, we'll also look at value. I talked about value and price and non-price elements and satisfaction. Customer satisfaction is a very important concept. We'll try and see how customers really get satisfied. How expectation versus their experience, how that really adds to their satisfaction and so on. And then we'll also look at the other terms like marketing channels, typically the distribution channel we'll look at. We'll also discuss about uh, something about supply chains from to the um, end product which reaches uh, consumers like you and me. We'll look at competition. What do you mean by competition? Now there's, some, there's one term which is called, uh, which is written here, my marketing myopia. Typically, who do you view as competition? For example, for railways, traditionally for years, the competition was roadways, right? But now if you really see closely, railways, the, comp the main competition is coming from airlines, right? The airline uh, prices, if you see, are going down day by day. And if you compare the you know, first AC fares or second AC fares, they are probably, uh, you know, the airline fares are matching those prices. So today, if ra railways really wants to be relevant, they have to look at uh, those kind of competition. We need to understand what really competition means. It's not necessarily that those players were only selling similar kinds of products or competition. It could be uh, many other players. So marketing myopia, we'll discuss this based on Theodore Levitt, uh, a Harvard professor. Uh, many years ago, he talked about this concept. We'll try and look at that article and try and understand. And as I said, marketing environment, who will discuss in greater detail in the uh, next module about this. Okay. Now, we would also look at evaluation of marketing, how marketing has eval uh, evolved over a period of time, evolu uh, evolution of marketing. So how it has really evolved. We started with production concepts, you know, in the wake of industrial, uh, industrial revolution, we realized, uh, companies realized that since there was a lot of demand which was there in the market, if I, more amounts of products are produced, they're going to sell by themselves, so production oriented. So most of the focus was on increasing production. So that's what, then we move from production to a product concept. When everybody was producing a lot of items, then uh, the market has realized, you know, uh, volumes are not what's going to give you business. You should also have good quality products. So the product concept came in. And then later on, the sales selling concept came in. So not only the quality of the product, you need to actively go and, and sell the product. So that's what it came in. And then the marketing concept. And now we are talking about holistic marketing concept, which uh, talks about internal. We talk about performance, integrated, and relationship marketing. So all these together becomes a holistic 
marketing concept. And then these four Ps we'll uh, discuss in more details, but here in this particular module, we're going to touch upon what do you understand by product? What do you understand? The product need not necessarily be a physical product. It could be also a service. So what do you mean by price? What do you mean by promotion? And uh, what do you mean by place? So these are the things that we're going to uh, discuss uh, here, and I'll touch upon in this case. And, and, and then, we're also going to look at what are the different tasks of marketing. So these are some of the things that we're going to uh, uh, delve in details in terms of developing a marketing strategy, assessing marketing opportunities and customer value. Uh, these are typically the tasks of marketing. So we'll touch upon you know, each of them in terms of uh, where does really marketing come in, in terms of choosing value, designing value, delivering, and sustaining growth. So this, in a nutshell, was a basic introduction to this course and also an introduction to the uh, module and the things that we're going to cover in this particular module. So uh, thank you for um, your patience and I'll see you again in when I come back with the introduction to the next module. Thank you.